So in this video, we're going to be making the tools of the trade. Those things that make Chirino work. It's the grid tile jig, the scoring sled, and the scoring sled jig. Uh, these are tools that you're going to spend a little bit of time making, probably about an hour. Uh, as long as you've read the manual first on this part, it should be kind of a snap. Um, you're also going to learn how to use uh, your knife to cut onto foam and make sure cutting foam is clean and, and some good knife techniques. Um, so keep in mind that these tools do take that time to make, but you will use them a lot. I am still, in fact, using the first grid tile jig that I made over three years ago. It looks kind of ratty. It's because it's literally made hundreds of grid tiles, um, but they really do last. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's worth it taking the time to make these really good. So let's get started. We'll start by gluing the underside of the grid tile jig onto some foam board with the paper still on it. And once that's glued on there, you can, you can even do it right after you put it on if you use a glue stick. We're going to cut out the grid tile jig uh, along the edges of the printout. And we'll do that using a ruler and several shallow cuts so we can make sure that we get that, those cuts nice and accurate. Next, we're gonna add a masking tape border around the edge to give it a little bit more durability. And then it's time to make the spine and all the ribs. And these are made out of foam board that's gonna be wrapped in masking tape. Now we're gonna cut out two strips, about this a little longer than the, the grid square jig itself. Um, and we're gonna make them the thickness of two pieces of foam board stacked on top of each other. And you can see here, I'm just holding two little pieces of scrap foam and I'm marking my strip with the knife itself. And then we're going to cut along a metal ruler to cut out the strip. And again, a few shallow cuts until it goes all the way through. And we'll do the same thing for another strip. So two pieces of foam board stacked on top of each other and then use the knife to mark the edge and cut it along the metal ruler. And once you have your two strips, you're just going to wrap uh, them in a piece of masking tape. This is going to make them really nice and durable and also make sure that when you're laying down grid tiles using this tool, if you get some hot glue on your jig, it won't ruin it. You want to make sure that that's really nice and on there. And just cut off the excess tape. So we're going to start by gluing down the spine. And uh, yeah, we're just kind of test fit it, make sure it looks pretty good on there. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure that that spine stays at a 90 degree angle to the jig itself. Like you don't want it leaning one side or the other. Uh, you may notice that it has a t it wants to lean one way or the other, uh, and that's because the cut might be a little crooked or whatever, but that's okay. What's going to happen is we're going to put a bead of hot glue down there and that will fill in any kind of voids uh, that may be between the, the base of the grid square jig and the spine itself. And then we'll just put the spine down and let the hot glue fill in any spaces so it'll actually stay perpendicular to the base of the grid square jig. That looks pretty good. And just set that aside to dry for a little while. And once it's totally dry, you can go ahead and trim off the ends of the spine. And remember, you can do this with multiple shallow cuts. That's always better. And then it's time to make the ribs. 
And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna cut the remaining strip into one inch, approximately one inch long uh, pieces. This will make it easier just to kind of put them on uh, for the ribs. And we'll cut off the excess of each of the ribs after they're all dry. Now you wanna make sure with the ribs, just like with the spine, that the ribs are perpendicular to the base of the jig. And you can use a little piece of scrap foam to wipe away any excess hot glue that may seep out from the sides of the rib. And also remember to put hot glue on the spine too. So you will put hot glue on the spine and on the base of the jig. That way the rib is nice and secure onto the, uh, onto the jig. And once you've done all the ribs on one side, you'll do the other side. Now you wanna make sure that your ribs on the other side match up with the ribs on the opposite side. So you wanna make sure that they're not leaning or, or aren't in line with, with those ribs. That's important because that will make sure that all your grid squares line up correctly on your grid tiles. Other than that, the procedure is the same. You just put them on, uh, making sure to have hot glue on the spine and the base of the jig so the ribs uh, stick on there well. And always making sure they line up with the rib on the other side. That looks good. And you'll just do this for all the ribs. Now once all these ribs are dry, we're going to trim off all those little extra bits just like we did for the spine. Now that it's dry, I'm just gonna check to make sure that all of my ribs are on there well. And if they're not, it's fine to add a little hot glue on there and, uh, and, and secure it a little bit better. And we'll cut all these ribs, again, with multiple cuts, being gentle. By the way, you should always have a, a sharp blade for this, but that kind of goes without saying. And there you go. One finished grid tile jig. Now, if you'd like, you can put on the uh, the top part of the grid tile jig here. And I do actually recommend also wrapping that in tape to kind of hold it down. I actually end up doing that off camera. And then it's time to make the scoring sled jig. Now I've glued it down on foam board here, just like uh, with the grid square jig. And we're gonna cut it out the same way around the outside edge here and uh, with multiple cuts. So we get a nice, accurate, clean edge. And then we're gonna cut out the white area in between those two yellow jutting out parts. And you'll notice there's this giant piece of scaffolding there with, uh, with big, in big letters, no glue here. Keep that in mind for later. This is gonna be glued onto a base of foam board, but first we're gonna put on some masking tape. It's amazing how much masking tape adds durability to foam board. Now you'll notice there's a specific order to put this masking tape on to wrap it around the stuff. And that is actually written on the jig itself. For instance, right here, it says step one on this, on this piece of masking tape area. The reason for this is there's, there's gonna be scoring sleds that are gonna rub on top of this. And putting the masking tape on in this order ensures that it won't start peeling off uh, because of that friction. And we do it to both the top and bottom parts. Again, there are step numbers on there, so you can kind of take out the guesswork of what to do in what order. Okay, and once that masking tape is on there, we're gonna glue it down to another piece of foam board, but first we're gonna cut it to size. You can just uh, do a flush to one edge on the top and bottom there. And now here's the part where you don't put glue uh, underneath the gray part. It's just gonna be on those two jutting out sections. And this is because the section that says no glue here, we're gonna cut away after this has been glued down and dried. 
basically that piece of scaffolding there is just there to make sure that those two other pieces are perfectly parallel to each other. And now we're gonna cut the jig out of this piece of foam board. You just wanna have a little bit hanging off the edge. Here it just happens to be two inches and that's, that's plenty. Uh, it could even just be an inch, but I just use the thickness of my ruler. Okay, so now our jig is almost done. We just gotta cut off that piece of gray scaffolding. Now remember, you don't wanna cut down through the piece of foam below. So do some shallow cuts and uh, you can go slow with it. Just wanna make sure you don't cut down through the other piece of foam. And if you're not sure, you can always test it as you go. Just kinda of give it a little wiggle and see. Nope, not through it yet. Give it a little bit more. And there we go. One finished scoring sled jig. And then it's time to make the scoring sled. Now, you'll notice there's a couple of scoring sleds in the basics manual, but the one we're gonna make is the grid square scoring sled. This is one of the sleds that's gonna get a lot of use because you're gonna use it to cut out all those little squares for the grid square. Uh, this tool makes that trivial, where in the old days it was kind of arduous, um, but this just makes it as easy as gliding the scoring sled across the foam. And we're gonna start by just kind of cutting out the the printout for the tool itself. Now we want to have these cuts be fairly accurate because the width of this printout is going to determine the width of the pieces that this scoring sled is going to cut. Then we're going to use a printout to cut out two pieces of foam board that are going to be the same size as uh, the printout. And these two pieces of foam board are going to be the base for the scoring sled. And as with all the other times, just make sure you do shallow cuts until it goes all the way through so you get a nice smooth cut. We're going to need three pieces of scrap foam. I'm just cutting them out of here to, uh, to have them. We're going to use the thickness of these three pieces of foam to make the fence that's going to go on the end of our scoring sled. This is gonna be the little piece that hangs down below the scoring sled and rides along the edge of the foam that we're cutting. That's sort of the secret ingredient to this. That's what keeps the scoring sled on track and makes sure that it cuts a perfectly sized piece each time. And once we've got that piece cut out, just take the paper off of both sides and we're gonna put some masking tape on the bottom half of it, wrapping around from one side to the other, just like we did for the ribs and the spine on the grid square jig. And then we're gonna take those two pieces that we cut out before and we're gonna glue them together with some hot glue. And this is gonna be the base of our scoring sled. And you wanna make sure that that butts up nice and smooth on one end there, cause that's where we're gonna put the fence that we just made. Now we're gonna use a piece of scrap foam as a height gauge to set how far down our fence is gonna hang below our scoring sled. And you can see you wanna have it just be one piece of foam board deep, and that looks good. So we're gonna leave our scoring sled body on top of the, the piece of scrap foam, add some hot glue, and we'll use that piece of scrap foam to make sure that the fence is perfectly positioned while it dries. And make sure you use a piece of scrap foam for this because you will get some hot glue on it as you'll see in a second here. And there it is, the fence is at the perfect depth to score one piece of foam board. And uh, that's how it's gonna run along the foam board eventually when it's all built. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. 
And next we're gonna glue the printout onto the bottom of the sled. Now we wanna make sure that uh, the fence is at the top of the printout. So in other words, above the, the writing when the writing is right side up. You'll also notice there's a, there's a little word with an arrow on the bottom edge. It says blade tip. Yeah, that's gonna be away from the fence because that's where the blade is actually going to be put in the jig. And just like we did for the grid square jig, we're gonna glue the printout onto the foam board. And then we're gonna wrap that printout in masking tape to kind of make it a little bit more durable. Just make sure when you put this printout on there that it is right up against that fence. We wanna make sure there's no gap in between the fence and the printout. So you just kind of gently slide it up there. There we go. You also want to make sure there's no bubbles in it. It should still be smooth. It shouldn't be buckling in the paper. That looks perfect. Then it's just time to wrap it in masking tape. And then we're gonna grab a piece of scrap foam again because we're gonna be cutting through the base of our scoring jig to make the slot where we're gonna put the utility knife blade. And I'm gonna use the utility knife blade, lining it up with where it says blade tip, and then marking the other end to see how long I need to make that slot. I wanna have the slot be as long as the blade is so the entire blade will fit in there. I start the cut by pushing down through both pieces of foam board on the front of the cut because I want to make sure that right there in the front where the, the blade is actually going to be cutting the foam is exactly on that line. And then I continue with, with gentle strokes until I make it all the way through the foam board for the rest of the cut. And then we're going to put the blade in there and uh, get it into position. Now you'll notice you only want to have the tip of that blade just kind of peeking out of there. It, essentially, you want to have that blade peeking out so it, it'll cut through about half of the foam. You'll also notice that the blade itself is hidden, is buried into the foam itself on the top. No part of the blade is exposed on the top. Uh, this is for safety reasons and also to make sure that the blade uh, is well seated and won't move around. And as an added precaution, we're going to add two pieces of scrap foam to encase the top part of that blade so you can't come into contact with it at all. The added benefit to this too is that uh, these blades are covered in a, in, a, in a very thin film of oil to keep them from rusting. And uh, if you don't cover up that blade there, it is gonna start to rust. So it's good to encase it in hot glue and foam like we're gonna do right here. And for the bottom, what we'll do is when we store it, we'll just put a little piece of foam board over the blade and that will uh, keep that from rusting as well. Now, another thing to note about these uh, scoring sleds, I've been using them now for the past two years. And what I found is, you know, they don't really dull. It's, it's kind of amazing. I have done literally thousands of grid squares with, with the half dozen or so scoring sleds that I've made through development of this process. And I've never had an issue with them actually uh, being too dull. So, um, yeah, rest assured, once you make one of these, it will last a long, long time. So as an example, and now this is something that should not generally happen. Um, this one here was a little bit snug because this was a beta version of the, the final version of the scoring sled. But if it uh, does end up cutting squares that are too wide to fit within the ribs of your grid squared jig, then you can just add some masking tape to the fence. Um, it's pretty easy to do and uh, it's a pretty quick fix um, Unless it's like a massive difference, but if there's a massive difference like they're really way too big Then there's either a problem with the calibration of your printer that you printed out the the scoring sled on Or you know, maybe that printout isn't snug up against the fence that that uh, is very important to keep in mind I just show this here just in case you do find that uh, it's a little bit too snug. Yeah, you just sort of add a little bit of masking tape on there until it's thin enough. And you can test this as you go. Um, I think I put on about five sheets here of, uh, of masking tape. And then you just kind of 
wrap it around and when you have all the pieces together you just uh, cut off the excess with a pair of scissors and then just test it again and if it's still too big just add some more masking tape. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle-free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com forward slash GameGearMaster. And a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much. And apologies if I mispronounce your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trino products, go to Patreon.com forward slash GameGearMaster.